raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Has anybody ever worked on a silver tone uh, metalist? Silver I have tone one in this. Metalist. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a 1434. I tried looking for a schematic and everybody on the web is looking for a schematic to it. I found one that was close, but it's still not exact. It's called a metalist. What kind of output yeah. chips does it use? Six L6s. Hmm. Four of them. But it's a strange thing. It's got two two output transformers, but they're wired together. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, they use two output transformers. And um, does that have two speakers? Uh, you got to use two speaker loads, or do they have the uh, uh, no, it, secondaries? It Two, two speaker loads. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I have a, a schematic of that. Let me see. Well, if, here. You, if you do, you'd be a rare, that would be rare because I looked all over the web and well, I found one, like I said, but it was a redrawn schematic. Was that, that the somebody, one, is that the one that, that they use the six tens? No, it's got two twelves. Well, they, they sold it both ways, I think. One way was six tens with uh uh, you had to plug two speaker cables in, though. Mm -hmm. You know, three tens were wired to one, and three were wired to the other. And yeah, this is a this is a this is a two twelve combo. Oh, it's a combo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Does it have the same type of chassis as those ones that were the uh, piggyback? They're separate. They're separate. You got the power amp in the bottom and the preamp in the top. The oh big wow! Cable with a cable running between them. Yeah. Actually, two cables. One for the power supply and the vibrato, and the plus other, other the things. weird thing about it is the the 12 AX7 in the top and the tw one of the 12 AX7s in the bottom share a filament. In that so if, so if you don't plug it in, then the two you know you have no no pre. -in. Plus they're using the uh, the uh, voltage on the cathode to bias that that voltage the filament voltage up. Anyway, are, I they just it, are they biasing it or are they using it for uh to lift it they're lifting it. They're lifting the filament up on just the first two tubes. Uh-huh. That's weird. Well, you yeah. know, I've I've seen some amps that were built in the fifties where they would take the a uh, couple of twelve AX sevens and they would wire them each for twelve point six volts and hook them in series. And use that for the cathode resistor for the output tubes and cathode bias it, mm -hmm. which is a stupid thing to do. It is a stupid thing to do because you get so much interaction. You know, you hit the um, you hit the output tubes hard, and that filament voltage goes up and it goes down. It's just not stable enough um, for those preamp tubes to work. You know, consistently, and it seems clever. You know, it's like, okay, well, let's make it to where it's more efficient, you know, instead of using this electricity as just heat, you know, let's use it to power the filaments, and, but it just, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Premier did that too on some of their amps. Chad's got his hand up. Go ahead, Chad. Can you tell me about a trainer YBA4? 1970. Yeah, is that one of those ones that's a knockoff of a Marshall? Does it use EL 34s? Yep. It's Dual a EL 34s. It's a technically a base amp, single 15 inch speaker. It's a dead nut Marshall copy. Hmm. I wonder if I I don't know if I have a schematic here. Did you pull up a Looks schematic? Like, no, I'm just looking at. There's one locally that. It's not selling. It looks looks it looks like it's traveled a bit. <laughs> well, those are uh, what what a uh, YBA dash YBA four combo. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Let's see here images. There it is right there. 
It looks like the one. That one's from 63. Yeah, it says, what does it say for here? For, huh. There's one. View file. I think it's just a Marshall. Um, let's see, I've got to turn that somehow. View. Uh, that's not it either. That's a Yorkville. Yorkville? That one is, yeah. They bought, I think it was Yorkville, bought Trainer in 2000? I don't remember. Well, they're calling, yeah, they're calling this a uh, YB4A, though. I mean, that's what this thing is. Base Master. YB4A. Yeah. Maybe it is. yeah. No, I think that's a one. Okay. We we got to figure out how to turn that son of a bitch uh, and you blow it. Usually up. you usually you can right click on it and it and it'll it'll give you the option to rotate uh, it. If you yeah. just right click on the picture, it won't do that, will it? No, it didn't. Well, let's blow it up first so we can see what the hell. Where's Zoom? Nope. I have to do view. Or you can right right click and say save image and then you can Right, exactly. And then you can do it in picture. Let's let's get it bigger and so we can see how big it is. <laughs> I'll look for turn better. Turn the monitor sideways. There you go. Do what? <laughs> and, yeah, just turn, turn your head monitor sideways. Turn the monitor sideways. Turn, turn monitor sideways. <laughs> yeah. You can see it good. Uh, perfect picture, <laughs> save background. Save picture as. That's what yeah, that's need. what I was looking for. It, did, it didn't give me that option. Let's see if this Yes, it did. Uh, yeah, it did. Where? Just do it again. Save what, picture. What are, yeah, there. right there. Right there. Yep, that's it. Save picture. There you go. Okay, good. Let's pull that up. And let's see what we got here. Okay, now I guess we're going to have to rotate image counterclockwise. There we go. And let's make image bigger. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Well, let's see. What have you got here? You got... Um... Oh, that's brutal. I'll send you a better version. <laughs> well, yeah, here you go. That is a um, oh, it's a boot. It's got a bootstrap. It looks like a bootstrap deal there. What's that? Where where this is going to this cathode follower circuit? It's not a cathode follower circuit though. What are they doing there? That's a little bit different there, but it's basically a Marshall. They just got this uh, second tube there, wired a little differently. They're just using it as a, uh, for some reason, it looks like a concertina, sort of, because it's got a 68K on the bottom and a 68K on the top, looks like. It's kind of weird. No, that, that's not what they're doing. I understand that, but that's what that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's what it looks like. They're, they're lifting this up, uh, certainly. It sort of looks like the uh, the same circuit in, is in a uh, a Tweed Deluxe sort of because you get the one meg resistor and the one point two and the sixty both sixty eight Ks. It's almost like a phase inverter, but not. Yeah, they're not taking signal off the bottom though. They're just taking the signal off the top. Right. They're not using uh, it's, they're not using the cathode follower function. Maybe they did, maybe they just didn't want quite as much gain as that's I guess that would be one way to reduce the gain of that. Yeah, but look what they're doing here. They've got um, 
this looks like a, a big value. This looks like some kind of feedback circuit here. They're they're running feedback, like an interstage feedback. But this would be positive feedback. You should have a better version of that. You yeah, know, that's you know. posi it's positive feedback because this right here is going to be in phase with this. So it's positive feedback. But then it's just driving your standard tone stack, and you got like a standard Marshall style output deal here with the this is basically a Marshall and this middle tube here is just wired differently instead of direct coupled the way they normally would do it it's not it's it's got some other deal here uh, this is actually providing gain though oh you know what this is this is some kind of filter um, this is a mid-range filter here that they're putting in between these tubes looks like I can't see the values of these. They probably made these double what you normally would have on a guitar amp. I think, I think Chad just said he sent you a better copy of this, but yeah, oh, he did. oh, you did. Yeah, you got a better copy. It's cleaner. Okay, let me see here. Mana from above. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, the YB4 or YBA4 is just like the original version that was created in 63 uh, except it came in a combo apparently not very popular with bass players because of the shallowness of the of the uh, cab but it is popular with guitar players mm -hmm. 63 isn't that early to copy a Marshall Yeah, I went the wrong way with it. Good point. Now we have to stand on our heads. Turn your monitor <laughs> over. <laughs> okay, here it is now. Now we can see. Yeah, it's a 3.3 .3 meg. It's modulating, uh, it looks like it's modulating this tube, the 3.3 .3 meg. That would really stop the high end. I mean, it'd take a lot of high end off running signal through that. Yeah, that's what they're doing. This is, um, this is a low pass filter right here. They just couple that to a low pass filter and they took the signal off of uh, this. Probably what happened is they lost so much gain right here, they needed a way to bring it back up. And you couldn't bring it up on a cathode follower, but you can off of a voltage amplifier. Uh, but they didn't need to bring it up that much. So instead of bringing it up, you know, say 35 dB by using a 12AX7 here, um, they split the plate resistor and cathode resistor, and that will drop the gain of this tube. That's a way to drop the gain of this tube. Um, so, except the top resistor is a 68K and the bottom is a 6.8K, so. Yeah, they, they, uh, they're losing it a little bit there, not much. Maybe the they want, you know what, they might have wanted to run this tube at a lower voltage, because when you run it at a lower voltage, you get a different frequency response. Maybe they didn't want it to be so high. Where's this connected? That's connected to D. And it's 350, 350 volts. 350 volts. And then with a 68K, you're probably running this up to close to 300 volts. That's probably why they did that. They just, you know, they knock off uh, some voltage off the bottom to try to keep that tube operating at a lower voltage, where the tube thinks it's at a lower voltage. But Gerald, this doesn't look much like a Marshall in the preamp. Notice that the first stages aren't even bypassed. Yeah, well, it's a base nope. amp. Oh, yeah, the, okay. by not having a, a, a bypass on there, it can take a bigger, a big signal with, before, with it, without it clipping. I mean, you could hit that tube with a, a volt and a half of signal on the input before it would uh, saturate. So that's why they did that. And it, it gives it compression too, which, you know, bass players like compression. So you're losing some gain there. 
you're losing gain there and then you're losing gain with this filter here in the middle so this tube here instead of running it as a cathode follower they're running it as a voltage amplifier to recover some of that gain it's a cool amp I mean heck and they they use good transformers on these too yeah well man that's about all I've got for tonight and um, send me some stuff for next week and we will do it again 